What's going on, y'all? It's J.D. Pakel. Today on The Hard Count, is this a hinge year for the Oklahoma Sooners as they prep for the SEC? Welcome into CFB with J.D., the people's channel for every single thing that you know that you love, college football related. Armstrong Sims, Jack McKenzie, they do the real heavy lifting for this show, and y'all drive the show. We have a great system going here. We'd love to have you subscribe to add to that system because we want more data points. We want to do the kind of content that you want to see. Based on the numbers, a lot of you want to hear about Oklahoma. And we've got no shortage of thoughts and opinions and to our own credit, I guess you could say, insight about the Sooners. So we're going to jump into some more about that. In that same vein, Oklahoma, obviously, it's no secret. They're leaving for the SEC. The timeline is still sort of murky. Some people thought it'd be next year. Obviously, it's not going to be next year, but now the focus has shifted to the year after that. So 2024 is what a lot of people think. We'll see if that's the case. What a lot of people think. So it got me thinking, okay, let's say that Oklahoma does go to the SEC in 2024. There's a lot of things going on right now in Norman. There has been a whirlwind of events in the last four months in Norman. You've been to, now you're on your third quarterback, your second head coach, No, actually, I take that back. Third quarterback and third head coach, if you want to count Bob Stoops. There's been a lot of things going on. Recruits committing, decommitting, all that. So we just broke it down, and I was just thinking, is this a hinge year for Oklahoma? Not in the sense that if things go poorly, Oklahoma will fall off the face of the earth. But in the same vein, if things go poorly, how much does that set you back as you go into the SEC? On the flip side, if things go well, how much does that set you up as you go into the SEC? And I think there's three different pillars it goes into, but a lot of it comes with just establishing Oklahoma in three different sectors. The first of which being, if this is a hinge year for Oklahoma, you need to establish stability within the program because that has been a word that has not been used to define the program in the last four months. Got a new head coach, got a new quarterback, got a new OC, got a new DC, A lot of things moving around, a lot of things that have been uncertain, unstable in Norman, establish some stability. Make it clear, hey, this is our operation. This is how we're going to do practices during the week. This is what our winter workouts is. This is what our mantra is. Have an identity as a culture as to what is going to be Oklahoma from here on out because it's going to look different than it did under Lincoln Riley. So establish a new normal. doesn't need to be a home run on your first try, but you need to at least establish that the boat is not going to sink because it's not going to under Brett Venables. They got their guy. They got their number one guy in Norman. The boat is just fine. Now make sure everybody on the team, on that roster, feels that way. In the same sense, make sure you get the guys that don't want to be there. Get them out. You can't have any halfway players. You can't have anybody that's thinking about staying and maybe wants to go somewhere else. Get them out. If they don't want to be there, get them out. It's only going to be cancerous to the rest of the team. In the same sense, players that do want to be there, empower them. Allow them to flourish. Allow them to step up to the plate in a big way when the program is at its most crucial point, arguably, in in the last 10, 15 years. So that's the first and foremost. Second, establish credibility with recruits. In a hinge year where you're going to the SEC and I'm a recruit, I'm thinking, okay, if Oklahoma is going to the SEC and they win six games this next year, my perception of the program is very different than if they win 10 games. Do you see what I'm saying? Make sure you're selling to recruits, hey, this thing, like I said, is stable. It's going to succeed. And we have a plan in place for what's going to happen in the SEC. We have a plan for you when we get to the SEC. Because on the outside looking in, it's, like I said, three different quarterbacks, a lot of guys decommitting, a lot of guys in the transfer portal, Make sure you have some credibility with these recruits. And they've established that they do, but I want to see that continue, especially during this next season, during this next calendar football season. I want to see them knock out those official visits, especially those official game visits. I want to see kids committing after games, as would any program. But I think that's going to be a telltale sign for them as they move forward and potentially make that jump to the SEC. Now, finally, this is probably the biggest one to me, and it kind of goes in the same um, genre as establishing stability, but establish who you are as a brand of Oklahoma. Like I mentioned, Lincoln Riley, he was in a lot of ways flashy. 
not in a negative way, but he's, he's flashy. I mean, they're having cookouts with cars on the field and guys are coming there to put up points, win Heisman trophies. That's great. You can still win the awards, win the Heisman trophies, sell people on that, but it's going to look different, like I said, under Venables because Venables is smash mouth, defensive minded, um, blue collar to an extent. And he's been somewhere Lincoln Rowley hasn't been. Brent Venables has been to the mountaintop as a coordinator. Brent Venables knows what it's like to put a ring on that finger. He knows how that jewelry feels on that ring finger, okay? So for Oklahoma, you got to buy into Brent Venables because Brent Venables has bought into you taking that job. And I think there's some mutual buy-in, obviously, on both parties. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there. But it needs to be a 1,000% understanding of what the new brand is. You can't have guys that committed to old Oklahoma that want to keep it old Oklahoma. Because old Oklahoma is just that, old. It's gone. It's last year's model. So there can't be any uh, division in that sense. Everyone's got to be on board, and it's got to be very clear what the expectation is, very clear what the culture is, and very clear what the plan of attack is from the X's and O's to how you do practice to how you're going to go about it in the offseason. That's paramount. So let's just review a little bit. Stability within the program. The boat's been rocking a little bit. It's ticking on a little bit of water. That's fine. Reestablish stability. I think one of the big things they did was not holding out for Caleb Williams. That, I think, to me, brought some stability and showed, no, OU's going to be OU. Establish credibility with recruits. Think they've done a good job doing that. Let's continue that if you're Oklahoma. Let's continue to get the right guys on board. Let's continue to make sure we're going for OKGs, our kind of guys, and not just whoever's the highest rated player. Finally, establish who you are as a team. Establish your brand. You're not Lincoln Riley's team anymore. You're Brent Benable's team. You're hungry for the first time in a long time. You've been doubted. You are doubted. You're getting up off the mat. Let's go see how they respond when they get punched in the mouth. That's it for us here on The Hard Count. Appreciate you tuning in. Would love to have you subscribe. We operate on a supply and demand basis, more or less. Whatever you demand, we supply. It's kind of how this thing works. We're going to keep the party rolling. We will see y'all next time.